Hello everyone, welcome to Rushchem summary videos. In this video, I'm going through a calculation involving volumetric analysis. Okay, so we look at this question taken from Rush Kemmer 3 and 4 study guide. So vitamin C present in a sample of food juice can be determined by a redox titration with iodine solution. So during the titration of ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, this is the formula, and iodine. The ascorbic acid is oxidized to dehydroascorbic acid. The formula is given, while iodine is reduced to iodide ions. Question one, give the half equation for the oxidation process. Now the question says, during the titration, ascorbic acid, the formula is given, right? The ascorbic acid is oxidized to this one. So you can say then, it's asking for the oxidation. This is ascorbic acid. This is the product, right? Now we can use, because it's a redox uh, reaction. So we can use the Cohes method here to balance the equation. So write K. O H E S. So K stands for key element, right? So carbon is the key element here. So you have six carbons, six carbons that's balance. Then O, O means oxygen. So you have six oxygen, six oxygen that's also balanced. If the oxygens are balanced, you don't need to add water. You can skip that step, right? If you need to balance oxygen, we have to use water to balance oxygens. And then H, H means hydrogens. To balance hydrogens, I'm using H plus. So this side you have eight hydrogens, the other side you have six hydrogens. Therefore, you want uh, two H plus on this side. So now the left side, no charge, zero. The right side is two plus because it's two into one plus two plus. So you want two minus, so that's why I put two electrons. Now it's balanced. So that is your, so S here means the states, right? You write the states, then all of these are AQ. Right, then the next one is give an equation to represent the overall reaction in the titration. To get the overall, I need to know the reduction. The question says, um, so it's reacting with iodine, while iodine is reduced to iodide ions. So how do we write that reaction? Iodine is what? I2. I2 is going to I minus. I2 is going to I minus. So you can see you have two iodine, so therefore I put two in front of I minus. Now the left side charge is zero, the right side is two into minus one, so two minus. So you want then two electrons on left side. So that is my reduction. So now add the oxidation and the reduction together. So you can see the electrons are getting canceled because you have two E on the right here. Here you have two E on the left, you can cancel them. So add them together. So C6H826 plus I2. The electrons are getting cancelled. Then from the other equation, you have C6H6O6 plus 2H plus. And from the other one, you have 2I minus. So this is my balanced equation where ascorbic acid and iodine are reacting one to one ratio. So the ratio, how do you get the ratio? Look at the coefficient. So in front of the formula of ascorbic acid, no number means the coefficient one. You also no number, so coefficient one. So it's one to one ratio. Okay, so look at this question. So 20 ml sample of fruit juice was diluted to 250 ml. 20 ml aliquot of this diluted sample was titrated with 0.015 molar iodine solution using starch indicator to obtain a titer of 12.4 ml. So you should know these terms. So what is meant by, uh, it says, 0.015 iodine solution using starch indicator obtain a titer. So titer is the volume delivered from the burette, right? And also the aliquot. Aliquot is a known volume which is measured from the pipette and which goes to the conical flask. Now it says 25 ml aliquot of this diluted sample, which was the fruit juice. So you, you have taken 25 ml aliquot of the fruit juice, the aliquot goes to the flask. So that's why in here, I have the diluted fruit juice solution, which is 25 ml. And then you put the iodine in the burette, right? 
the concentration of iodine is 0.015 and obtain a titer of 12.4. So 12.4 is what? How much of iodine you added from the burette? The titer is the volume you added from the burette. So that is the volume for iodine then. Okay, so question one, calculate the moles of iodine. So how do we find the moles? N equals to CV. So I have now for iodine, I have both concentration and the volume. So the concentration is this, right? Times by the volume, volume should be in liters. So the volume of iodine is 12.4, that was your titer. So 0 0.0124 gives you this many moles. So that's the moles of iodine that you added to the fruit juice, the diluted fruit juice solution. Okay, calculate the moles of ascorbic acid present in 25 ml aliquot. Now it's asking how many moles of asco, uh, how many moles of ascorbic acid or else vitamin C present in here. So in the previous equation, you wrote the equation here. I have written again. You can see it's one to one ratio. So if you know the moles of iodine, the moles of ascorbic acid also will be same, right? In this 25 ml, you will have this many moles. Why? What is the reason? Because it's one to one ratio. Okay, so next question, calculate the moles of ascorbic acid present in the original 20 ml of fruit juice. Okay, pre in the previous question, I found how many moles of ascorbic acid is present in that 25 ml solution, which was diluted. Okay, now you have to read the question again and you have to see how you did the dilution. Okay, so, it's, so this is taken from the previous question. It says 20 ml sample of fruit juice was diluted to 250 ml, right? So what we did, so you had 20 ml, right? You dilute. So what is dilute? Dilution means you just add water, right? To, to drop the concentration. Now it's 250 ml. Then 25 ml aliquot of this diluted solution was titrated. So from this solution, you take, from this solution, you take 25 ml out and then, uh, then you titrate, right? So what we do, you have 20 ml sample of fruit juice, right? Then you dilute it by adding water. And now it's 250 ml. Now from that 250, you take 25 ml out and then you titrate. Okay, now the question is asking, calculate the moles of ascorbic acid present in the original 20 ml. It's asking the moles here, so this moles here. Okay, so we know the moles in this 25 ml. That's what we calculated before, right? Okay, so now we'll see how I did the calculation. So moles of ascorbic acid in 25 ml, that, that is what I calculated before in the previous question, 0 0.000186 moles. That was present in 25 ml. So then I can find the moles of ascorbic acid present in 250 ml here. So from 250, you take something out. Now I found the mo that moles in that 25 ml, you have this many moles. Therefore, how many moles are present in 250? So you can see 25 to 250 means it's 10 times, right? So therefore, the moles has to be then 10 times. So here you will have less moles, why? Right? Because from here, you have taken some portion out. So now you've, you have the moles in 25, which is this. So therefore, the moles present in here has to be 10 times more because it's from 25 to 250, that's 10 times. So you multiply it by 10. It's now 0 0.00186 moles. But the question is asking, how many moles are in this 20 ml? The moles won't change, why? From there to there, I'm doing a dilution. So dilution is just, you add in water. So add in water will not change the amount of ascorbic acid that you had in the sample, right? If you had N moles of ascorbic acid in your original 20 ml, even after the dilution, you will still have the same moles present. So what changes is only the concentration when you dilute, but the moles are not changing, which means in 250 ml equals to moles of ascorbic acid in original 20 ml, right? That same why dilution is not changing the mole, which is then same answer. 
So you have to remember then, when I do a dilution, the moles are not changing, but the concentration will drop. Okay, then the next question, what is the molar concentration of ascorbic acid in fruit juice sample? The concentration, so we know C equals to N over V. So this is the moles, right? These moles are in, now you found that's in 20 ml, 20 ml, you have to make it liters, so 0 0.02 liters. Therefore, this is the concentration. So this is how you find the original concentration. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Now, now it's time to try questions. You can find questions on both uh, unit three and four and one and two study guides or in these pages. Thanks for watching my videos. If you need any further information, please visit our website, www.rushchem.com. Okay, I'll, I'll see you in another video.